There is a serial killer lurking in the background in Grand Theft Auto V. Did you spot him the first time you played? Because I certainly didn't. And as we dig into his history and victims, it gets even more disturbing. Join me today as we unpack the Infinity Killer in Grand Theft Auto V, diving into who he is, why he does what he does, and giving you each of the locations of his victims that you can go to right now. But before we do that, if you like this video today and you think this kind of thing's interesting, check out the channel. I've got plenty more of this, and it's basically what I do here. So Grand Theft Auto V is currently the most recent game in the franchise, and it's important to note that each time we see a new game in the series, we see the boundaries get pushed just a little bit further, as if Rockstar is trying to test the limits of what they can include in their games. Like seriously, there is a mission where a woman gets sucked into a jet engine in this one. At the tail end of it, get it? There's a little details they add into the games. GTA V is a special example, having a plethora of little easter eggs that don't actually play into the story, but they are nice little things for you to find in your exploration of the game world. As we've previously covered on this channel, it could be anything from UFOs hovering above Fort Zancudo, to the haunting ghost of a very unfortunate victim that only comes out at night, to the topic of today's video, a serial killer. And this guy has some interesting habits that we'll be getting into, but first, let's look at how he discovered his existence and who he might be. Across San Andreas, there are a few little details that you'd potentially gloss over the first time you encounter them, but when we look at them collectively, we realize there's a pattern. Let's start with the bloody footprints that you find in the Yellow Jacket Inn in Sandy Shores. If you enter this tavern, you'll be able to find, obviously, bloody footprints around the eight ball pool table. Now, the number eight is going to be a common occurrence throughout this video, so keep that in mind. There are a number of references to this mystery given that the number 8, putting it sideways, is the infinity symbol. If you look around the small islands north of Mount Chiliad, you'll be able to find 8 bodies at the bottom of the sea floor. They're all wrapped up in kind of burial wrappings and they're just sitting there. Again, the number 8. Now it is entirely possible that 8 people were just randomly murdered by a completely different person, but even I'm hesitant to say that Rockstar would add this detail into the game, spending time and money creating the models and placing this in the map, unless there was a good enough reason. Later in the video, we'll also find out the actual identity of these guys and how they link into this whole mystery. They're joggers who were killed in the late 90s. Keep that little fact in mind as we continue. If we go over to the Bolingbroke Penitentiary, there is another clue left by our killer. On the wall of the recreation yard near cell block 9A, there is some writing left by our mystery man. The writing goes as follows. Where water meets land and fire once spewed forth, there the infinite eight shall stay until I return. Where water meets land. Initially I thought this was some kind of beach, to be honest, but uh, mm, bit bit dicey there. Where fire once spewed forth and where, where water meets land and fire once spewed forth. Kind of reminds me of a volcano. Where is the one place in San Andreas that could have potentially been a volcano? I'm thinking Mount Chiliad. See, this guy was imprisoned at some point, and he knows that the bodies are out there. He plans on making a return to them, but for what purpose? Why does he even need to go back? In Sandy Shores, close to some houses, there is a large rock in a field near the main road. On the side of this rock is a short nursery rhyme written by our killer. He references his murders and his psychotic state of mind. Next to the poem, the number 8 is referenced various times on the rock. The number 8 again is our link to the killer here. And interestingly enough, if you search this area a little bit more, you'll find a house. A house that has been burnt quite severely. And if you want to know why, this is the house of our killer, and this is where we're going to learn his name. The burnt house is located in Sandy Shores, Blaine County. It appears to have been set on fire probably before the events of Grand Theft Auto V because the inside of this house is very charred and looks like it's been abandoned for quite some time. We also never hear any references to this house throughout the storyline of Grand Theft Auto V, so that's kind of where I'm going with it. Inside the house, the player can find the phrase, there will be eight written in black ink on a broken chunk of the wall. My guess is that the phrasing of this sentence tells me that this was probably written before the eight people we found in the seafloor were killed. 
Further inside the house, there is another phrase written in black ink, just behind a small bookshelf. The phrase reads, Eight is just infinity stood up. Now next to this, there are three sets of five tick marks, adding up to 15. This is where it gets a bit dark, because we're not 100% sure on the significance of this number, as obviously our killer so far has only been interested in the number eight. But one theory seems to stand up here. Tied to a rafter that kind of runs along the roof of the room that has the there will be eight sentence, is a pair of small shoes dangling down. Now these shoes appear to be probably too small for a grown man or woman to wear, but could fit a child. The theory here is that one of two situations has occurred. Either one of the jogging victims mentioned earlier managed to survive 15 days, and our killer just wanted to for some reason keep track of that, or this is the age of the child that this man has killed. Pretty dark even by Rockstar's standards. See what I mean about them pushing the boundaries? If we go back to the wall, the back wall of the house, the phrase, go away Merle Abrahams, you're a wrongin, can be seen written in large letters. And there we go. We finally get to put a name to her, I don't want to say face, Merle Abrahams. Who is this guy? You see, inside a small, half-destroyed shack nearby in Sandy Shores, a small newspaper clipping can be found, nailed to a wooden roof support. The newspaper clipping dates back to December of 2004, and it talks about Mel Abrahams' death and the infinity murders that were carried out by him. You see, this is the missing link, the piece of evidence that ties Mel Abrahams back to all the deaths. This is the killer of our eight bodies found in Mount Chiliad. This is the guy who was put in prison for the very same murders, only to laughingly scrawl across the prison walls that nobody knew where they are. Do you want to know why that is? Because no one does know where they are. The newspaper clipping itself even says that they disappeared and that no bodies were ever found. Us as the player, we're actually the only people who have solved this mystery. And there you have it. In Grand Theft Auto V, you solve a murder mystery. The one case that the police departments in San Andreas couldn't solve. Now that's an interesting little thing, considering in Grand Theft Auto games you're mainly the ones doing the murders. But hey. If discovering hidden details like this in games is your thing, then stick around, because this channel is full of them.